Welcome everyone to a replay cast here. We have game number one coming at you in the scrim series between white flag gamers here on the Legion side taking on it is what it is here on the Hellborn side. Now I got a chance to live cast games two and three and uh, those will be uh, uploaded as well but this one I did not get a chance to cover so thus I'm doing a replay cast here. And uh, we're already underway here with the draft. I'll go over the bands really quickly here. We have Electrician, Kraken, and Fade going to be banned out by the Hellborn side. Then we have Chipper, Monarch, and Kinesis banned away from the Legion side. So uh, one side banning away supports, the other side banning away initiators. Uh, quite the different style there. Now we have do have the first pick going over to the Hellborn as they do go with a Witch Slayer first pick. We have the response picks of both Magmus and Moira coming out here from the Legion side. And then there's Behemoth and Moraxis coming out as the second and third picks here for the Hellborn team. So lots of stuns being picked up from both sides. We have a pair of initiators on the Hellborn side as well as a support Witch Slayer. We could be seeing a support Behemoth. Um, possibly an offlane Behemoth and a mid Moraxis, but I think we typically tend to see the offlane Moraxis and more of the roaming support behemoth, but we'll have to wait and see uh, with some more picks what that will ultimately uh, turn into. And then we have the Magmus and the Moira. Definitely could be the two supports. We could still see a Magmus core. Uh, it is something Volka likes to play um, in the position three role. So still not sure yet, but... Uh, Pretty interesting draft so far from the two sides. Just going to go ahead and speed this up here. Beauty of the replay, of course, is we can kind of move things along at our leisure. We have, it looks like carries being addressed here by both sides. Both sides still needing a carry hero. Slow this down a little bit here. So we have Corrupted Disciple, the Madman, and Gemini going to be banned away from the Legion side. So a lot of those active... Uh, fighting style of carries. Then we have Sir Benzington, Malikin, and there's the Gladiator. So two carries plus uh, a potential mid pick uh, coming out there. So pretty straightforward bands, I would say. We're going to see the Forsaken Archer be picked up here. They're going to go with a hard carry. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of initiation he's going to have to go up against, but he does have the Moira to kind of help him out there. They're going to pick up the Rally as well, so they pick up another initiator. Don't expect either those uh, either of those heroes to be their mid uh just yet but um puppet pretty master. solid lineup nonetheless and we're gonna see puppet master as the response pick to that forsaken archer we're gonna see a puppet master carry versus forsaken archer so ranged carry battle and there's the king clouds so we're going to have what i believe to be the mid hero here going to be the king clouds and then we'll most likely have the offlane Moraxis and the second support behemoth. So they're going the position to King Clout. I think the Cero is fantastic. Great at team fighting. Great for setting up uh, counter initiations as well with his prey to power. And I'm pretty excited to see the Clout here, uh, to be honest, because it's a hero we don't see a whole lot. And I think it is actually quite undervalued. But with the King Clout picked up, they have about 50 seconds here to kind of think about what they want to pick for their mid. Uh, they do have the hard carry in Forsaken, so I'm expecting something that doesn't farm too, too much, but definitely can compete with the Clout and bring a lot of fighting presence in the mid game to the table with that Forsaken pick. So um, something like a Pebbles maybe could be on the board here. Um, something perhaps even a little bit more tanky. To kind of sit in the front lines for Forsaken Archer. Things like that come to mind. But uh, we'll see what they ultimately go for. They could look to pick up something like a Salforest. But they're going to go with a Bombardier. I don't know if that was the right pick. It is a very squishy hero. I feel like they are lacking a hero that kind of soaks damage for Forsaken. At this point. Because Rally and Magnus are not really going to be looking to sit in the front lines of the team fight. So, kind of don't like the bomb pick here. Um, I think I would have rather seen something tanky. But uh, we'll see how it works out for them. Let's get it on. 
They have uh, they have the line stuns with the airstrike, which can definitely do a lot of damage if they're able to line that up uh, very well. So game one is underway here. See how the lanes shape up. It looks like we could have a tri lane with Forsaken Archer. Uh, where do they want to go, though, is the question. Do they want to go to the long lane or to the short lane? And then vice versa. Will we be seeing tri lane versus tri lane action? We see Moira reporting to the top lane. She's going to get a word of sight down. Picks up the golden apple here as well. <clears throat> Golden apples across the board. We have all five players here from the Hellborn side. Now, are they getting spotted on this ward? It doesn't look like they've been spotted just yet. King Clout will now be spotted. We have three players up here. The Rally second support. Moira and Forsaken Archer. So they are running Magmus Core. He's going to be in the bottom lane. And I think they could do this both ways. They could have the farm on Rally or the farm on Magmus. Both heroes kind of flexible. Uh, typically, Rally is better when he is farmed than when he is a support. But he can use the compel to kind of save people if they get caught out of position. Bombardier versus King Clout. I think this is bomb favored, but don't ever underestimate the power of King Clout. If he's able to keep spamming goblins on top of you, does apply the DOT, and then cannot bottle sip, stuff like that. The damage adds up very quickly. But Moraxis versus Magmus, I believe this should be Magmus favored for the majority of the lane. I think he's just a little bit too too good in the melee 1v1s compared to Moraxis, especially in the early um, laning stages. But tri lane versus tri lane up here. Behemoth, Puppet Master, Witch Slayer versus Forsaken, Moira, Rally. I would say this tri lanes are relatively equal. Forsaken, I don't know if she's standing in the best position here. Her positioning is uh, definitely risky, but Behemoth's going to show himself now and they're going to know that it is a try v try. But uh, I'm expecting the Legion heroes to win both the solo lanes, at least early on. We'll see if that does end up happening. Bombardier 6-1 against a 2-1 King Clout. Sagan takes a lot of pressure up here. She doesn't need to be careful. She doesn't have the most HP right now. <laughs> Magmus 11 and 3 against a 4 and 0 Moraxis. So yeah, he is winning this lane. Forces out the health potion from Moraxis. Top river. Rally gonna compel there. Gets the Merrick soon. Gonna continue to fight the behemoth here. Bombardier 12 and 2. King Cloud gonna pick up some last hits here in the tower. This is that one, but he's 10 and 2 against 12 and 2. Bombardier's got the bottle coming. We have an initiation here. This could be the Bloodlust kill. Behemoth getting caught here. He's going to go down. That's a Bloodlust on the Forsaken Archer as well. It's the hero that they would love their Bloodlust on. He's going to jump up to 370 GPM. The Bloodlust. <clears throat> we have a pull coming in here. So definitely with the Witch Slayer and the Behemoth, these are supports that kind of do need levels. They they don't do a whole lot of damage early on, but once they get levels, they, they start to become very, very powerful. Oh. 
There's a stun up the show on the creep wave. For second, gonna get minied here. It's taking a lot of creep damage. Compel comes out from Rally to save him. Now Moira could be in some trouble. Is a crippling volley gonna land onto two? There's no Compel up for five more seconds though. I don't think we'll see them pursue here. Yeah, the supports are very low on life here. Bottom lane, Magmus takes out the Moraxis. I didn't see that, but he's definitely winning this lane. 24 and 4 against 17. No, 11 and 0. Heavily winning this lane. 420 GPM versus 165. Boca doing very good on the Magmus there. Gonna bottle up the DD as well. Umberdeer gets the illusion rune taken out by Clout. 19 and 4 against 24 and 2. Not too much action really in the chai lane. As I would have expected, but gonna fight over some neutrals here. Amit's gonna do a pull here, the single camp. Master is level four. It's the highest level in the chai lane. Oh, I'm just gonna miss his sticky bomb there. Both sides out of bottle charges. Magmus is level six, Marax is still level five. Oh, he actually stunned air. <laughs> Rally specs the roar. I don't really like that. I think he should spec battle experience for the extra damage. I don't think the roar um, does a whole lot. 37 and 4 against 16 and 1. Magmus bullying Moraxis down here in the bot lane. So they have a 2000 gold lead already. Bombardier as well. He's on 335 versus 240 GPM clout. That's level 6 now. I could look to rotate somewhere. This bomb's gonna go for the top rune here. Why are we gonna possibly catch the behemoth? Doesn't throw the shards of Harkon stun out. A little bit surprised by that. And Umberdeer activating the haste. Gonna more or less waste the haste rune here with that missed kill attempt. Amoth could get gone on here. Here comes the shards of Harkon. The compel is going to hit. Taken not in the area though to follow it up. And they're looking for a turn here. Crippling Volley's gonna hit on the Witch Slayer. And they're gonna now turn the target onto the Puppet Master. This could be a dead Puppet Master. Probably gonna go down first. Puppet Master might hold his ground. He's gonna be fine here with the Was that a golden apple? I think it was. And that's going to be disastrous. They're going to lose Moira here as well. That's going to be a double tap for the Puppet Master. And that backfired very much for the Legion tri lane there. And now with those kills, Puppet Master going to uh, pull ahead of FA by quite a bit here. 380 GPM. Get Clout doing some jungle. Still have Inspect. Still hasn't specced his bluster yet. He's going for the conscription and the maxed out goblins. Get Magmus with steam boots, power supply bottle. I love Volka's item build as well. When he's doing so well, not to go for the striders, to go for the steam boots and continue to, continue to dominate his lane. But they have now rotated Forsaken down here. They feel like they cannot lean against the tri lane anymore. Here comes the boat from a bombardier. He gets the matrix off. Is this going to be enough to keep him alive? He is three versus one here. I think Volley actually misses. Oh no, that could be the difference maker. Magmus has a lava surge coming up. He's going to take him out, but Magmus might get punished here for the stun. No, it looks like he will not.
So it's gonna. Oh, this could be a kill on the rally here. Oh no, he missed the witch slayer stun. Oh no. So many things going wrong for both sides. Rally gonna get the escape there. That was a voodoo puppet used as well. It's gonna be down for 100 seconds. We go for the knuckles. Top of the ghost marchers. We have Behemoth coming in from the flank. There's the stun. Rax is gonna get in range for a quake here. Forsaken gonna go down once again. And that's gonna be his second death. He's down to 278 gold per minute now. We're going to do a pull here. King Clout is level 9 actually. He's recovered very well. Bombardier just hitting level 8. And this was Clout actually was behind and last hits to the Bombardier. Magma's going to get turned on here as Clout came in with the Parade of Power. So that backfired. And now Magmus, who is off to a super good start here, was over 400 GPM. He's now fallen to 340 due to having to leave his bottom lane and... Gets counter ganked here by the King Cloud Parade of Power, and all of a sudden the GPMs have kind of swapped. It was Legion having three heroes on top, now it's they're all behind Puppet Master and Cloud. And Cloud is almost 400 GPM. Yeah, Voodoo Puppet in 10 seconds. Rally's playing or acting like an offlaner, but I expect we'll see Magmus coming up here very soon. We have the Veiled Rotted Magmus, the Invis Bombardier. Oh, if only they knew they were there. They cannot see them, of course. But I'm going to try to get Vision. Let's have his Airstrike, too. There's the Airstrike and the Bomb. It's going to be a really fast kill. Two TPs came in, but they're going to be cancelled immediately. King Cloud continues to jungle. He's taking a lot of space this game, prioritizing his levels and his GPM. See what he decides to go for. We do see items like the Staff of the Master and the Restoration Stone typically on Cloud, which do buff up his skill set quite nicely. Forsaken. Not transitioning into any items here at the 11 minute mark, still below 300 GPM. Doesn't have any way to kind of sustain herself or flash farm neutrals just yet. She could definitely look to jungle. She could use piercing arrows here on the two camps. We'll see if she does that actually. I would actually expect her to do that. And uh, she'll take these out with the health potion. And well, we have the rest of the squad taking out the tier 1 tower with Puppet Master being dead and respawning. He goes into the jungle. He's going to be going for the Elder Parasite here. Still remains above the top 3 farmers of the Legion side. An Arcane Vortex here. Looks like that was defending the Parade of Power initiation on the Forsaken. So good Vortex. Uh, not resulting in any kills, but definitely keeping their Forsaken alive. They're achieving that much and our is going to be down here in the bottom lane he's working towards this portal key but still quite far away he's gonna get spotted by the magmas oh will he get spotted oh that's a good tp actually they might still think he's down here as well they're kind of looking for him but they're not gonna find him and I missed that one, but that was a stun into airstrike. Behemoth goes down. Bombardier up to 390 GPM. He's got a lot of build up this game. See if he goes for staff, or tablet, or portal key. 
I think Sate typically likes to go for staff, and I think it would be really good this game with having both a Magmus and a Rally in his team. Once one of those heroes gets a portal key, the ability to line up a, a global airstrike from across the map is really powerful. But Puppet's got the Elder now, and he's way ahead of Forsaken in terms of farming item. Well, I shouldn't say way ahead, but he is ahead. We see now Forsaken picks up the Whispering, so she's going to start to um, be able to sustain herself while she farms those camps. See Magmus getting really close to his portal key here. Can he actually bottle that? Oh, he can. Nice direct pathing there from Magmus. Hacker. Where are we going to get the counter ward off? We got the Matrix coming out. More access. He's bottle sipping. He's going to live actually. Hope it's coming in. There's the Parade of Power. Lines up on the Moira and the Forsaken. And here comes the stun. Voodoo Puppet working on the Magmas. He's going to live. Here comes Rally with a Compel on the Clout. Crippling Volley. They do take out the Moira. Clout's gonna live here with the Bottle Slips. The wall from Behemoth causing disruption for Forsaken. And Behemoth, he doesn't have a Shockwave. There's the Airstrike. It completely misses though. And Forsaken's gonna volley up the Behemoth. She's gonna survive for now. But does Behemoth have a Fissure in one more second? Yes, he will land the Fissure and he will take out the Forsaken. Meanwhile, the Quake's done sending up the Magmas. Bombardier takes out the Maraxis with the Sticky Bomb. And what a chaotic fight this was. This was a 3 for 3 fight as uh, Puppet actually did take get taken out here. They dough for him. So both carries end up dying. Both mids and offlaners or second supports actually stay alive. This was a, I would say this was a pretty even fight. The only difference being the tower died here. So that's going to give Legion a gold boost. But other than that, it was a very even team fight. And uh, Magmus did get his portal key picked up there, so I don't think he lost too much gold from that fight. Bombardier on 3,300 gold. See what he decides to go for. But I am expecting it to be the Staff of the Master this game. I um, guess he's valuing saving up his gold, not, not, want, not wanting to purchase any of the items just yet. But uh, I would say he's very close to buying his item. Smoked up Witch Slayer here. They're gonna try to catch the Magmas. Stacking the CC. Uh, yeah, see, I don't like that play from Witch Slayer. The, he was already puppet showed on the uh, on the creep there. It gets the job done, but I think they maybe didn't need to use his ultimate if they staggered the CC very well. And then he could have the ultimate still up. But a kill is a kill. He did have vestments. They get the job done. And it's up again in 90 seconds. Rally picks up Steam Boots. Uh, I kind of dislike that as he's the second support. I think he should just go Striders and he'd be a lot closer to his portal key right now. He would actually almost have it. Whereas the Behemoth, he's got 1200 gold, so he's getting out farmed by the Rally by about 50 GPM. But Forsaken, still trying to break 400 GPM. Not really having a good game here. And uh, the thing I'm worried about is that she probably wants to go into a farm, uh, like a damage item and then a Shrunken. But there's going to be a timing here where they get their portal keys on Maraxis and Behemoth. And if she doesn't have a Shrunken, she's just going to die to any combination of two heroes on the Hellborn side. And Forsaken is a good majority of their damage. So... If she doesn't have her shrunken uh, at a relatively good timing here, it's going to be disastrous for Legion in my opinion. 
because this Hellborn lineup is very mid game focused. They have very strong initiation, very strong burst power with portal keys only. So they don't need too many items to to be able to group up and kind of achieve what they want to do. And Papa Master is very close to his shroud now. Uh, which he's going to look to finish here in the jungle. He needs about 200 more gold. And he's looking to be in a pretty solid spot here. We did have a Gnome's Wisdom picked up on the Cloud. I didn't mention that, but he's going what looks like to be a Staff of the Master now. He's going to be very tanky, actually. 1,700 life. There's the shroud picked up on Puppet Master. I think Forsaken is going for Nullfire Blade here. Since she has the uh, Soul Scream Ring. Tower will get denied here. We see all five from Hellborn. They might look to do Kongor actually. Um, or access is 100 gold from a PK. Or right, they're just gonna catch Rally here with the Puppet Master. Why would he use the Voodoo Puppet though? See, that doesn't make any sense to me. This is a support Rally and they have five people there. That's a waste of an ultimate. There's no way Rally escapes there. I feel like that's the second time somebody has used too many skills. We're gonna get the Maraxis portal key. And it was a good kill nonetheless though, because Rally was very close to his blink. He would have had it if he had Striders uh, a couple of minutes ago. Eruption in the top lane, airstrike as well. There's the napalm from the staff. Arcane vortex though. Actually, not sure if that was a good vortex or not. It actually prevented Cloud from dying to the napalm damage, and it just gave them time to TP in and respond. So I would say that that was a bad arcane vortex, because uh, now they at least don't get a kill out of uh, Magmus dying. It would have at least been a one for one. So yeah, a lot of abilities being used wrong this game, I would say, by both sides. The, some a little bit more costly than others. Sometimes it's better to overkill rather than use your skills wrong and miss a, miss a kill. But Clout is really close to his stuff. I'm actually not sure if he needs one more piece or if this is the last two pieces for staff here with the 2,000 gold. He might be one one part off, but that will take another maybe two to three minutes to farm up his stuff if he can get the creeps. Mammoth, I think, just got his portal key delivered. Oh no, he didn't get his portal key. He's actually playing almost like a main support role. And Witchslayer is level 11. But I don't know. I, I, I really dislike this. Like the portal key. Oh, he does have the portal key. Okay. I, I was going to say. I thought I saw him with a lot of gold. Here's the counter initiation from Cloud Behemoth. Um, he blinked in, but he didn't use Shockwave. That looked kind of weird. They're going to kill Magmus. Sigma Bomb's going to blow up on Clout, but they're not going to follow that up. Now Puppet Master, he's here. He's looking for an opening. They're going to find him there on the Rev Ward. He's going to get Vortexed. And there's the counter initiation. Puppet's going to get his skills up, but he's going to go down to the Napalm. It's an ultimate warrior streak for the Bombardier. And they do trade the Rally there. Really good Rev Ward from Bomb there scouting out the Puppet. Coming in with the Shroud, and that's how they got the counter initiation with the Vortex. It's pretty good. And Forsaken, I don't think she was even present for that. 
So she goes straight no fire three. I think this is wrong. Uh, like, it's really greedy. I feel like uh, oh, we skipped a pause. I love when I skip pauses. I I think it's really greedy in the sense that he he really can't participate in fights until he has shunken just due to the Hellborn's lineup. So I think even keeping like a level one no fire and going shunken would have been fine, and then upgrading it after. But he is farming very well, and if Legion can make enough space for him to farm another 4,000 gold, then this is fine. This is fine. But I don't think a Null Fire Blade 3 helps him farm as efficiently as something else. Like he could have went, uh, he could have went Firebrand or Frostburn or something like that into, um, into a Shunken Head. Now I don't really see a need for Geometer's Bane in this game, so I don't think he should have went that, but he could have went parts for Dawnbringer. Um, maybe like half or two thirds, so to speak, of it, and then went into a Shunken, but I don't think the Nullfire Blade, at least level three right now, makes a whole lot of sense. But I love the item, don't get me wrong. I just think he needs the Shunken earlier rather than at 30 minutes. Or closer to 30 minutes, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, his, his team's going to try to keep making space for him. Once he has shrunken, that's when we're going to see him join. And if he joins before that, I think it's a mistake. Because he's just going to get bursted down in fights. There's just way too much. There's three portal keys. There's a King Cloud who doesn't need a portal key. He's got level 16 in staff. Like, that That alone is scary. I think the King Cloud could more or less almost solo Forsaken. Let alone uh, a Blink ultimate from a Witch Slayer. Or a shockwave from Mehemet. Like, there's just so much initiation from Hellborn. So, right now, they kind of recognize, or they're they're seeing, like, hey guys, we got all our core items, we're kind of strong, let's try to find the FA and stop her before getting her shrunken. And they're, they're looking to do that here, but unfortunately, they might miss her. She's over on Ancients. What they should be looking to do is maybe try to take an objective. <clears throat> Umberder is a PK? Now do they know that they're in here is the question. Things could start to get spicy as we have all five from Hellborn rotating down here into the Legion Jungle Bombardier. Oh, he's actually going for it. He's going to take out the Puppet Master and deal quite a bit of damage to the Behemoth. There's the Witch Slayer Silver Bullet as well as the Shockwave. You take out Bombardier, but here comes the single stun from Magma. Starts of Harkon is applied by the Moira, but it's not going to connect. And will they only get the one kill on the Puppet Master as Rally also went down? King Cloud did use his Parade of Power there uh, with the Moraxis as well. So they did get two for the Puppet Master, but it looks like they might be... They might be getting out of here because they're not feeling comfortable fighting without Puppet Master. Meanwhile, Forsaken, she needs about a thousand more for Shunken. That's the timing that she's looking to hit. With the death on Puppet Master, she's taking a 50 gold per minute lead here, sitting at 500. Bombardier died, but he's still on 460 GPM. He's having a really good game, I would say, on, uh, on his buildup. He's got 2,000 gold as well. The... Bad news is I don't think there's really a, a reason for him to staff anybody. His obvious target would be Rally, but Rally doesn't have a Shrunken, and without a Shrunken, I don't foresee him getting off a reasonably good slam. So he needs to get a Shrunken, and then the, the staff to, to Rally would make a lot of sense, but I feel like Rally and Magmus are switching roles this game, or they're trying to, but Rally keeps dying. He's been taking a lot of farm, uh, he has 93 creep kills, but this could be farm put on the Magmus instead. And then Magmus could have like uh, utility items like Storm Spirit, Sheep Stick, even a tablet wouldn't be awful, but probably not his best choice. But instead we're stuck with a Magmus who won his lane initially, then got kicked out of his lane. And then now he's trying to go a shrunken head, but at the same time, Magmus doesn't really auto attack, so shrunken head doesn't make a lot of sense here. It would almost be better for him to go for a barrier idol and just kind of 
bulk up on magic armor rather than having a shrunken head. But that's my opinion. I think he's going for shrunken head. I think it's going to be the wrong item pickup. Because I think more or less once he's done his eruption stun, uh, he may get off a second stun. He may not. And having a shrunken I don't think allows him to really change what he's doing in the fights. But we're going to see a Kongor attempt here from Legion. Forsaken taking a lot of damage. She has her shrunken picked up now. But man, is she on low HP? If there's any movement here from Hellborn, which it doesn't look like there will be, uh, that would have been. Oh, we have an initiation here. They're gonna catch Rally. Open Master pops the Shunken Knight. He's gonna use the Veiled Rod here with the Shroud and the Elder. He actually picks up his own Shunken Head. Didn't talk about that pickup, but he's got a nice trio of items here: the Shunken Elder Shroud combination. Looks like Behemoth was stealing stacks in the jungle. I didn't even notice that was going on. But Bombardier is going to get slam dunked here by the Behemoth. There is the Parade of Power. And Magma's going to get the stun off. Bombardier's going to survive. No, he goes down to the conscription damage. And they also get the kill. Uh, or they get the return kill on the Witch Slayer. But the Arcane Vortex. No, it's going to mess up the airstrike. It's not going to matter in the end as they do take out King Clout regardless. And uh, Forsaken picks up a double tap there. Getting both those kills. That was actually a buyback on Bombardier as well. So they are going to need to get something out of this Bombardier buyback. That is the first buyback of the match. They see Puppet Master. He's got a shrunken up in one second. He's going to shroud in. Look to maybe get an opening here. On either the Bombardier or the Magmus. There's the Steam Bath coming in. Puppet Master gonna get revealed on that Word of Revelation. He pops the Shrunken Head. Morax is not gonna get his initiation off. They're gonna get the kill onto Moira, and that's gonna be their consolation prize, it looks like, for the fight. So. With the buyback, I'm not sure what Bomb's going to go for as his next item. They do get the tower deny in the mid lane. But Master going to run into Rally. Rally again. Oh my god, it was almost a one shot there from the whip Voodoo Puppet combo. And it's game over for you, Rally. I love this puppet skin. This is my favorite avatar, by the way. Just because he says it's game over for you. Still no item progression on the Magmus or the Rally. And with the buyback on Bomb, I think he wants to go for Sheepstick here. That would be my guess. I, I would say he wants the Disable. And he's going to hold off on staff, staffing anybody because it's not worth it right now. But Forsaken has a DD. And we see Hellborn doing their own Kongor. Oh my god, look at that axe damage from our axes. Those axes just chunk down Kongor. Keep throwing axes, uh, Kongor, hello. Initiation here on the Magmus from the Witch Slayer. Oh, did the gun get disjointed there on the Vortex? I think it did. They're gonna catch Magmus regardless. That was a really nice interaction. Or a good, very well timed Vortex, but not gonna save his life regardless. I'm gonna get the Congor taken out. So, we'll talk about the buffs. We got damage on bomb, move speed, move speed on Moira, move speed, move speed. Uh, we got double move speed. This is the second Congor for Hellborn. Move speed and. You know, initiation move speed and damage one apiece two on move speed on the carry two on the move speed on the witch slayer i think on witch slayer i would have chose damage maybe not sure but this is probably okay behemoth chose movement speed i would probably also pick damage on behemoth to be honest but a lot of the players i think sometimes just value movement speed as the best option um I feel like F.A. has to have bought something. He hasn't had an item change in a while. Or maybe he dropped something? But, uh, yeah, I think he's got something. Firebrand? Oh, he went Shroud. 
Okay, so he's going for Genjuro. He wants a positioning item. Um, I suppose that's okay. He's going up against a lot of initiation. He could shroud in and then shrunken right away. Kind of gives him uh, gives him a nice uh, positioning tool, as I said. I have a storm sword on Behemoth. All of a sudden, this guy's got some items. That's nice. Will Genjuro on Puppet Master, so he's. It's actually not ahead of FA, that's weird. If I looked at the items, I would say Puppet's leading in items. But I think that's just due to Nullfire 3 costing a lot. And him having the upgraded shroud, whereas he has the only the shroud, not the Gunjuro. See the jump here on the puppet. Doesn't get a shrunken off. Now he does. There's the Arcane Vortex. But again, it kinda hinders the, the piercing arrows there. They're going to lose the Magmus. Don't really like that jump next to the base. I, I feel like this is very greedy to go for the puppet there. Whether or not they know there's a storm or not on the behemoth is kind of irrelevant. Just the positioning of the, the jump. Rate of power. Oh, it just barely misses on Bombardier. That would have been pretty awesome if it hit. They're even still looking for him, thinking he may be still up here. But yeah, it's only a, what is it, a 70, 80 second cooldown? I mean, the skill is back up in one minute. That's not that bad. So he's got the, he actually has a shrunken head already. And now a sustainer. This King Cloud is really farmed. Haven't paid too much attention to him, but once he gets Restoration Stone, that could honestly be a game changer. I don't foresee how Legion can fight into two Parade of Powers that fear through magic immunity. That's going to be pretty nuts. And Magmus, he's been working on this Shrunken for like an eternity. But again, I don't think this Shrunken changes anything. So I feel like this item pickup is is just a waste of gold at this point. We got Rally picking up a Neophytes book. I guess he's going for Tablet. Oof, I don't know. I feel like a lot of item pickups in this game are very wrong. I would say the Shrunken is wrong. The, the potential Tablet is wrong here on Rally. He needs Shrunken. If he's going to get off a slam, like he's never going to get off a slam in, in any fight. And then Forsaken, I think, maybe could have went for different items this game. But I feel like all of Hellborn's items make sense. Like we have Portal King to Hellflower. We've got a nice build up. Gnome, Staff, then a Shrunken to avoid all their damage. And now a Resto. Like he gets the Resto and this item build is more or less perfect. Puppet's item build is... I'll say this is a 9 out of 10. Like, this is really good. Don't think he should change anything, so I probably should just give it a 10 out of 10. Which Slayer and Behemoth have PKs, that's all they need, and anything else they buy is... It's like, man, we got farm. That's good. So... I think now we're seeing Hellborn come into a lead here. 2,000 gold, 3,500 3, XP. And the way the momentum of the game has shifted, like, both carries evenly, I think that kind of favors uh, Puppet, I think, at this point, just because it feels like he's ahead of Forsaken. Like, Forsaken doesn't feel like she's transitioning well. Magmus gonna get jumped here again. Magmus goes down without getting an eruption off. Rally's gonna fall as well. Forsaken's gonna run in with the Shunken on. But man, he's still got to go up against Parade of Power. Why is he not using the Parade of Power? He could fear the Forsaken through the Shrunken. Maybe he doesn't know that. He, he does have it still up, right? He does. That's strange to me that they decided not to use that skill. But, uh... Yep, Moira and Bomb were not there. Moira was there in spirit. No pun intended. Spirit Mimic, but Bomb, uh, actually no, I think he was there, he just TP'd out. But yeah, that's a, a 3 for nothing fight, and this is starting to look very heavily in favor of Hellborn. They have a Hellflower now on Moraxis. like compare Moraxis to Magmus, Magmus owned his lane early game, and he has nothing to show for it, just a couple of suicide jumps, and he's 3 and 8 now. Doesn't have a, a second item, and Moraxis, who got stomped in lane, is having so much uh, more impact on almost 300 GPM in comparison. And we have Clout 
very close to his resto stone. I think when he gets resto stone, this game is over. Like there is no, no comeback mechanic. Well, I shouldn't say no comeback mechanic, but there is no way they win against double, double parade of power if he hits it on multiple targets. There's just no way. Why we're gonna try to go for the steal. Airstrike gonna attempt the steal. It's gonna do a lot of damage though. Magmus jumps in, they get the one kill on the Moraxis. Shrunken was used there by King Cloud. He's actually gonna parade a power just to escape, which that might be okay. He is worth quite a lot, I would say. And he probably would have got caught by another Lava Surge initiation, so. Normally I'm, not, I'm against usages of skills like that, but I, I think that one is okay. And it's only uh, like a one minute downtime where they just have to relax and wait for it to come back up. Holy cow, Puppet Master went wing bow. I was not expecting that. Definitely was expecting either a Hellflower or uh, maybe even like... I don't want to say Symbol would be really good here, but it's mostly just burst damage on Legion. And if you survive it, you, you kind of kind of own. But he wants the combat against FA. That's going to... It's going to be uh, really troublesome for Forsaken to deal with. Puppet Master Wingbow is shrunken. So, hard to say that that's a bad pickup, but it is definitely an unusual one for a Puppet Master to pick up, since he's not an Agi carry. What's going on here? Puppet steeping the top lane. Behemoth going to go back in on the Bomber Day. There's the shrunken head. Behemoth trying to bait this one out. He's going to avoid the airstrike. Bomb's going to fall. Yeah, it's gonna be a kill. Forsaken getting caught here by the Witch Slayer. Mana Sundering the Witch Slayer that already used all the skills. Forsaken's gonna get caught here. No Vortex was used. Magmus, gonna die. Feels like, feels like the fights are definitely going the way of Hellborn now. They're gonna call it here. GG's are called. Bubba Master finishes with 600 GPM, and King Clout was about to pick up his Restoration Stone. This is, I would say, fairly well played by Hellborn. They executed their draft, I think, much better than Legion did. I think both drafts were, were definitely strong. And I think that this game number one here came down to execution 100%. So hats off to Hellborn. They they played this one much better than Legion. Thus, they deserve the victory here, taking it at the 40-minute mark. That will conclude the replay cast here for game number one.